Happy Thursday. My name is Amber and welcome to this month's Project Pan Update and a Pan, pan a Palette Challenge Update. Blah. <laughs> Trying to talk today is ridiculous. Um, but I am going to go on and split this up into two videos. Um, this video is particularly going to focus on everything that I'm using with my Urban Decay Naked Palette because as you know from following me, I am challenging myself to finish that palette before December. Um, and then Faithers K tagged me to film a products that I hit pan on video. And so everything else that I'm using, if you're curious about my skincare, um, what I'm using hair care, the makeup that's not overly hyped, um, I will be uploading that second video. And then um, I have some empties, so I'm going to start filming regular empties videos along with my Project Pan updates um, because I've been finishing makeup and, you know, who knows, you may be curious to what I've finished in that regard because um, I particularly like the empties videos where YouTubers finish makeup. So lots, lots, lots. And um, before we get started, if you are new to my videos, welcome and thank you so much for subscribing. Um, if you're new to Project Panning, I will include my top 10 Holy Grail Project Pan tips below in the description box. If you haven't had a chance to watch it or if you're feeling overwhelmed by the status of your makeup collection, because I know for me in particular, um, a lot of the people in my subscription feed have had hauls over and over and over again hauls. So um, it just drives me further into finishing some more makeup. But if you're feeling like all you're seeing is hauls, check out that um, top 10 Holy Grail Project Pan tips so that you're inspired um, possibly to go into your collection and finish something off before you go and purchase some new things. So there's that. And then um, as we get into the Project Pan update, I wanted to give you the heads up that not too much longer, um, but once my son starts school, I will be filming regularly. Because um, right now, pretty much I film my Project Pan updates each month and then I try to film other videos, but life, life is crazy right now. I mean, I know you guys are as busy as I am, if not busier. So, um, once my son starts school, you will be seeing some more videos from me. So I wanted to give you the heads up because the list of videos I want to film is getting longer and longer and longer. In fact, I still need to get my nailed it tag that I came up with up on YouTube. But like I said, life is crazy, absolutely crazy right now. So, once school starts, you will be seeing me quite a bit more often than you have been. So let's go on and get into um, the things that I've been using with my Naked palette and talk about how I feel about some of those things. And yeah, all right. So for starters, let's go on and talk about where I am with my Naked palette. And you guys, oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you for joining me in panning your own palettes. I, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Keep your videos coming. And I'm just, I'm flattered that those of you that are watching my videos, like as you see me make more and more progress, you are that much more inspired to go into your makeup. It's amazing, amazing. And I want to extend the happiness that I've had in accomplishing this myself to you because you can't even express how thrilling it is to get through something huge in your makeup collection because I know a lot of us, we've purchased a lot of makeup after our years of watching other YouTubers and so to finish something that monumental is amazing, absolutely amazing. And I have officially decided, um, if you would like to join me because I know some of you are, in January 2015, I will begin panning my Lorac Pro palette and I will also be filming a shop that stash on it if you do not own the Mac. <laughs> Let's try that again. But I will be filming a um, shop that stash if you do not own the Lorac Pro, but you want to pan eyeshadows out of your collection. Um, so I will be showing you things that I have that are similar um, so that you can look through your collections to see if you have other similar things. Um, so you can pan those right along with us. So. Thank you, thank you, thank you for those of you that are, are joining me on this journey because I just, it makes me so incredibly excited to see your videos because I know that you are achieving that success and, and that momentum for yourself um, so that you can keep moving through your collection and get new stuff and, and you know that you can do it. You don't have to get sucked into halls, like you can finish something. So here is where I am with my Urban Decay Naked palette. 
I've made huge progress this month. Um, I have these extra shadows on here because the one that I've made huge progress in particular is in Sidecar. And I wanted to let you guys know, if you have finished Sidecar or you're worried about running out of Sidecar, if you own the Urban Decay Book of Shadows 4, you have an automatic backup. Um, this is Sidecar from Urban Decay Book of Shadows 4. Or if you have the Urban Decay 15th Anniversary Palette, the color Midnight 15 is very close to Sidecar as well. Um, I wanted to go on and pull this out because when I finish it, um, I figured that I'm going to use Sidecar, Toasted, and Dark Horse together. So, But right now I've been doing an Orchid look. Um, something that I've talked about in my top 10 Holy Grail Project Pan tips is to pick a neutral palette and work your other colors in with it. Right now I've decided to use the Orchid Trend and I've paired an Omen from my 15th Anniversary palette. As you can see, I've hit major pan in that as well. And what I'm doing with this is you're not going to see the actual shift in color just because of the lighting that I've got going on in my bathroom right now. Um, but I use Omen in the inner portion of my crease and then I shift it into Dark Horse on my outer third. Um, since I have hooded eyes, I do not have a traditional outer V. Um, but it is a beautiful way to incorporate Orchid. It's summer appropriate. It's appropriate for brown eyes. It's appropriate for um, just wanting a trendy, up-to-date look while still being very, very neutral. Because really all it does is it brings out the brown in my eyes. Um, you're not looking at my eyes going, that is some, you know, crazy, crazy eyeshadow you got going on there, Amber. Um, but it's absolutely beautiful. And then over my lower lash line, I put it on top of the um, Revlon Photo Ready Eye Cajal. Um, and I guess it's just purple. There's no color name on it. Um, but I phased this in because I wanted a brightened pencil. My Rimmel Nude Coal Eyeliner has made my eyes water horribly. Um, I don't know if it's just because it's old or if something irritates my eyes when I put it on. I don't know, but it got to the point where it's dangerous for me to drive and things because my eyes were watering so bad to get that eyeliner out. So this brightener shade is beautiful. I've been using it on my waterline. And the purple side is a very intense purple. It looks like this. I know it's an awful swatch. I was trying to do it quickly. Um, but when I set it with the Omen, it's a beautiful smoky blue um, that is perfect for brown eyes. Um, if you do not have Omen from the 15th Anniversary Palette, you can pick up the Jane Eyeshadow in Hyacinth or the NYX Eyeshadow in Icon or the Burst Into Blooms Eyeshadow from L'Oreal Infallible, the Press Pigments. Um, and then there are a couple others as well if you want to have the exact same effect without... Um, having access to the 15th anniversary palette. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'm still using Buck to fill in my brows. And as you can see, I've cleared out both sides of the pan. And right now I'm working on clearing out the lower half of the eyeshadow as I fill in my brows. And then Dark Horse, I've been using it every day, but it's not easy to see a well in this. Like, I know I've made progress, it just doesn't look like much. Um, but like I said, I use it every day to fill in my outer V over the top of Omen. And then I use Creep. All I'm using this for is to set my MAC Black Track Fluid Line. And look at how fast it's going. I use a Real Technique Synthetic Eyeliner Brush and just set the top of it and go. I love it. Um, it's been great. But like I said, look at how fast. So I figure as we phase into the fall... Um, I'm, I'm kind of getting to the point where I realize I need to start working solidly out of my naked palette again if I expect to finish. So what I thought I would do is use my backup of Sidecar on my lid still over the Maybelline Color Tattoo in Barely Branded. A lot of people are project painting this right now and why? It's fabulous. Um, but if you want a drugstore alternative to Max Painterly Paint Pot, Give this a shot. If you have this in your collection or if you don't have it, go pick it up because it's fairly inexpensive. Um, it is more metallic. Let me show you real quick. It is more metallic than Max Painterly Paint Pot, but it makes a beautiful eyeshadow base. And one of my subscribers gave me the fantastic idea to use this as a cream cheek highlight. Brilliant. Like, seriously, I'm going to try that because the next... Um, foundation I'm rotating in is another 
um, overly hyped product on YouTube. It's going to be the CoverGirl Outlast Stay Fabulous Foundation. I purchased the shade Creamy Natural. I thought since I will be back to using a traditional foundation, I will try this as a cream highlight and see how I feel. So another top 10 Holy Grail Project Pan tip, multitasking your products using those eye bases as cheek highlights. So I'll keep you posted how I feel about that. And then the other thing that I was using with my Naked palette is I had to pull highlighting shades and I decided to use my Too Faced Naked Eyes palette because it's one of my older palettes. That's what it looks like on the outside. But I've been using the shade Pink Cheeks in the bottom left corner there. Um, as you can see, I've made very, very big progress on it. And the reason I've made that huge progress is because I'm using it as an all over facial highlight. Um, I use it to highlight the inner portion of my eye to brighten up my eyes under my glasses. I use it um, on my brow bone on top of the NYX Jumbo Eyeshadow Pencil in Milk. And as you can see, I've made severe progress on this. Um, and P.S. and by the way, if you want a great sharpener, you need to purchase the, where is it? Oh, I can't even find that silly thing right now. Okay, there it is. All right, if you want a really great sharpener for the next Jumbo Eyeshadow Pencil, go to Walgreens and pick up the Revlon black pencil sharpener with the gold writing. It gives the perfect tip to the NYX Jumbo Eyeshadow Pencils. It's beautiful. Absolutely love it, and it's like less than $5. So, But I've been using um, Pink Cheeks, and I highlight my... Um, inner portion of my eye, my brow bone, and I'm also using it on my cheeks as my highlight, my cupid's bow, and I put a little bit on my chin to bring some light to the lower portion of my face. I absolutely love it. Um, I'm going to continue rotating this palette in through December since it is one of my older ones because I will not start my Lorac Pro until um, January. So I figure when um, Creep is done, I can use Stiletto to um, set my MAC Black Track Fluid line. Um, I figured I can use in the buff is my next highlight. And I figured as the um, fall comes around, I'll use that in the buff, um, sidecar, toasted, and uh, dark horse as my eye look. And that way I stay solidly in my naked palette. And then when I finish buck, um, I figured I could use this matte taupe shade over here called like a virgin to fill in my brows and then I can rotate the others in. But I wanna keep using this palette as well um, before just rotating my Lorac Pro in in January. That way, those of us that are painting the Lorac Pro, we can all start it at the same time and nobody has really an unfair advantage. So there we go with that. And then um, I have to talk about this because I totally forgot to do it. Um, my Lorac Behind the Scenes Eye Primer. I'm almost at the bottom of this, but I got a really, really great tip um, from one of my friends a few days ago. Excuse me. She has had a lot of problems with her sunglasses ruining her foundation because of the nose pieces. And so she started using eye primer um, on top of her makeup primer so that her foundation doesn't mess up um, under her sunglasses frames. And so I started trying it because this is a thin enough flush tone consistency that it doesn't change the look of my um, foundation and my powder under my glasses, and it works. Like, I haven't had severe, like, transfer as bad as it has been because um, it's super crazy humid outside, but my makeup has stayed put um, under my nose pieces a whole lot better since I started using um, eye primer in that area. So just another tip to multitask and get through your eye primers a little faster. There you go. And then, um, as far as the rest of my face, I have been panning. Um, I finished my Marc Jacobs blush. I'll talk about that in my empties video. I phased in the CoverGirl eyeshadow in Knockout Pink because it is the drugstore alternative to that Marc Jacobs blush. P.S. And by the way. Um, but just within the last month, you can see how powdery it is um, because that's the progress I've made using a Sony Kashuk angled um, powder brush. So there we go with that. This is Knockout Pink from CoverGirl. It's an eyeshadow. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful orchid color for blush, so that way I can wear it with Omen. They pair super, super well together. I've been loving this. And then 
the next thing that I have hit pan on um, is my Bare Minerals Ready Bronzer in the Skinny Dip. I use this to warm up my whole face. And then I've been going over it with my um, Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Bronzer um, as my actual contour. And what I do with this, this is a brand new deluxe size sample, which is actually pretty big. Um, I'm basically using this, I go over in my um, cheek contour area, the temples on my forehead, the sides of my nose, and then I um, contour under my chin to slim this area out just a little bit since I'm carrying some extra weight. So that's what I'm doing with that. And then as far as my lip products, um, I have been project panning my Revlon Kissable Balm Stain in Darling um, because this is all I have left. That's the other reason I kept wearing Omen um, because I figure if this is all I have um, as far as this last like orchid lip color, I can stick with it a little while longer. So basically I put this on in the morning when I put on my makeup. And during the day when I'm touching up, I'm going through with what's left in the very bottom of my uh, Maybelline Color Vivids in Brazenberry. Like I said, I've scooped it out. And I basically um, take a Real Techniques lip brush like this, scoop out what's left, put it on my lips like I have now, and I'm topping it with the Revlon Super Lustrous Gloss in Sugar Violet. This is where I am with the brush in it. So without the brush, it's a little bit lower than that. I'm making progress in this. That makes me extremely happy to see that. And then I did, oh, I did. I picked up the Revlon, um, what is it, Color Stay Ultimate Liquid Lipstick in Ultimate Orchid because I love this Kissable Balm Stain color so much, but I can't find this anywhere anymore. And I don't want to purchase it on Amazon because I don't know how old it's going to be by the time I get it. So, Here's the Kissable Balm Stain. I went on and bought this because I know that I'm still gonna have gloss left when I finish the Brazenberry. So I figure this is basically a really pretty sticky base for my lips. So I figured the way I'm gonna use the rest of this lip gloss is to top it on top of the uh, liquid lipstick from Revlon. So I did pick that up just so I finished this. And then um, I'm guaranteed to finish my Kissable Balm Stain, and I'll just use the Brazen Berry um, for touch-ups on the go. So that's where I am with the lip products. And then, yeah, that's about, I guess I'll talk about this right now. Um, the other thing that I've hit pan on that, or well, it's overly hyped on YouTube, is the um, Maybelline Instant Age Rewind and Brightener. If you are a glasses wearer, this is a fabulous, fabulous product to brighten up that entire area under your frames, summer, winter, fall, I mean seasonless. It's a beautiful product for you to use because if you make a triangle shape with it and blend it in, it's the perfect highlight under your frames without just overshadowing your, your eye makeup. Um, it doesn't take away from the rest of your makeup. It just makes everything um, lighter, brighter, and fresher looking. So highly recommend this if you're a glasses wear. And then um, I'll briefly touch on this. I hit pan in my MAC Black Track Fluid line, as you can see. Super duper excited. I can't wait to uh, hit some more. It's been my one liner that I've been using, and I've been um, applying it with a Sonia Kashuk angled eyeliner brush and setting it with Creep. And yeah, that's about it. Everything else I'll talk about in the tag video from Faithers K. So don't forget, check out that Top 10 Holy Grail Project Pan Tips and stay tuned. I'm going to be doing a second video with all those other products. So um, have a fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye.